Hello and welcome to the Car Care Not channel. And would you guys believe it has been almost a year since I bought this Camry? To me, it's still new, and right now it sits exactly at 5,000 miles. It has actually been at 5,000 miles for a while now because it has been sitting here. We literally just started warming up, moved outside, shut it off. I've been driving many other cars for reviews and whatnot, so we haven't been driving this and it needs service and this would be the third service for it. It is less than a year old and has 5,000 miles. Folks, I always tell you, you've seen the braking oil change for this car when I first bought it. I put it th first thousand miles very quickly and then we got to right around 4,000 miles, something around there. And I did another oil change and now we're at 5,000. So in the past six months, I've put almost a thousand miles on this car. It's just mainly been sitting here. Most of those miles were actually a trip. One of them was a 300 mile trip. Today, we're gonna talk about, firstly, we're gonna do the service because it's really due and I'll tell you why we need to do the service in a hurry. And uh, we'll get to that. Sorry, Eros, we're gonna share some of your secrets if you would. But we're going to also talk about how this car has been for me. What do I think about it a year from now? And some of you might not be aware, this is actually my first brand new hybrid purchase. I've never owned a hybrid from new and uh, it's been an interesting process. I usually like faster cars. You know, I like cars with a little bit more power, a little bigger sedans and more quiet. But this has been an interesting purchase. So I'm gonna update you on how's the car doing, what do I like about it, and what I don't like about it, because there are a few things that are not good. But having said that, let's get it on the lift, let's get the 5,000 mile service done, and then we'll talk about what I think about it, and some odds and ends in between. All right. is let's reset the maintenance light and the best part is uh, once he stops dinging at us there is a message maintenance required visit your dealer well that's not gonna happen because I am the dealer folks I've decided to just forego the free maintenance that Toyota gives us good for you Toyota you get to save a few bucks with me I just by the time I go to the dealership and get this and I have to drive all the way to the dealership where I used to work because I don't trust nobody else, it's just not worth it. I'm just going to do the oil changes here, do oil maintenance, and we're good. Starting with resetting the maintenance slide. So we're going to go to settings and we're going to go to vehicle settings. So I find it. There we go. Vehicle settings and then scheduled maintenance. Reset. Yes. Reset complete. Now, let's go and start the maintenance. So, most people ask, what's in a 5,000 mile maintenance? Don't mind the dusty engine. I'm actually not going to clean my engine. And that is actually for you guys. It's killing me to see it like this. I would love to go clean it. I'm gonna wait for this engine to get really dirty so I can make a video that you all have been asking for, how to safely wash your engine, including a hybrid. This is actually a hybrid. So uh, here's a sacrifice for you guys. Not gonna clean it. We're just gonna fight the temptation. 5,000 mile service. If you read the book, it'll have a giant list of things. Check this, check that. We're basically doing an inspection. A thorough, not a deep inspection when we're going to look at the brakes and everything. No, kind of a glance inspection. And in most of these cars, we're talking Toyotas here, you're going to look at small leaks. We're going to look at things that are not sitting right, uh, covers that have ripped off, things like that. We're not going to take the brakes off, tear them apart and all that. No, we're just going to do a visual inspection. Look around, do you see coolant coming out of the reservoir? Do you see coolant that is low? Do you see brake fluid that is low? Everything should be perfect, but we're just verifying here. Now, the one thing extra that I'm gonna do in this 5K 
is check the air filter because it's technically almost been a year since we've done this. So we're gonna take a quick peek at the air filter, which looks fine. I expected it to be fine. I don't drive in a dusty environment. Something that people have been saying about air filters, and I hear this a lot from customers coming in the shop. You pull the original air filter. It'll have a part number right here. You read this one. Now you go to a dealership, this part number will be completely different. And in some cases, especially in a 4Runner, for example, the filter will be thick, like this section will be very high, and it'll have a mat on it. You go buy the one at a dealership, it's half the thickness, it doesn't have that mat. Folks, that is not the dealership ripping you off. The filters that they use at the factory will have a different part number, sometimes they'll have a different shape. That's just the way it is. You can't get those filters. In some cases, you can if you take the same part number and you insist to the dealership. But just know that sometimes they'll tell you, we can't get you that part because simply it's not made available by Toyota. So that is, uh, you know, we are, we are harsh on the dealers sometimes, but when they're right, they're right. I mean, we have to be fair as well. If you can't get the part, you can't get the part. So the remainder of the 5K service is Oil change, I know we're not gonna get into the debate. This is the third oil change on my 5,000 mile car, one year, less than one year old, almost one year old. So we're not gonna get into that debate. This is my car, I do however I want. I am foregoing my free maintenance from Toyota because thank you very much. If your dealer uses this oil and this filter, they will use this filter, but they will never use this oil. So sorry about that, but you can keep that free maintenance. Additionally, this is something that most people don't know about. These cars have a charcoal activated cabin filter from the factory. We're kind of switching to the Lexus side a little bit with these cars, mainly because a lot of people complain about the mold smell and all that. So they started putting charcoal activated cabin filters. These have one year, 10,000 mile interval. Now, if you don't change it every one year, 10,000 mile interval, basically the activated part of the filter stops working. It just becomes a regular air cabin filter, which is fine. But if you want to keep that charcoal activated part working, change it every year, and that's what we're gonna do here. And something that I do, every change of season, I put new wiper inserts. Trust me, these cost a few bucks. Windshield, wi windshield costs a small fortune. If you scratch it, it's done and then you get those haziness and the lights hit it, you can't see anything. It's not worth it, just change these every six months. They're a few bucks. So let's take the oil cap, let's lift this car up and the first thing you do when you take an oil cap, is look inside of it. If you see all kinds of white stuff, perhaps you want to drive this car more or change this oil more often because this equals moisture. That means this engine is not driven enough where it warms up and kind of get, expels that moisture inside and you're building up a lot. Very common with very low mile cars. Now this car, it doesn't have that even though we haven't been driving it much because it sits in an air conditioned space, air conditioned and heated. It's not sitting outside exposed to high humidity all the time. Okay, let's do this. Let's pull the cover off first. Okay. Well, whoever did this oil change don't have any leaks. <laughs> That's a happy moment. Well, moment of truth, my friends. This oil barely has a thousand miles on it. Let's see. Yeah, this doesn't look very happy. This short drive, start, shut off, start, shut off. Most of the time we try to get it in EV mode, but it's, it's not terrible, but it's not great either. It smells like fuel though. A lot of people ask about this. Why does my a25 oil smell like fuel that's normal folks with these engines that is normal
especially if you drive at short distances. This is very, very normal. Well, while that drains, here is something for you if you don't know this. If you have the tool, this is the Toyota tool, but if you have a tool that removes the canister filters, it actually fits the oil filter on the A25, the N1 filter, the F1, the F2, they're all the same. It actually fits, the cup fits on the filter, it comes right off. So this cup fits on this filter, as long as it's not crushed, it's an original Toyota filter, it fits right on, it's designed the same size. Pretty cool. Well, let's put our new filter on. In case you're wondering, this is an N1 filter. Toyota filters, majority of them, the first bunch of numbers are the same, then YZZ, something, something. This is an N1. Some of them will have a different bunch of numbers at the beginning, but that's how you recognize the filter. And in the first video of this car, you guys told me, why don't you lubricate the o-ring or the gasket on the filter? Because it is already lubricated from the factory, my friends. Toyota filters, for the exception of G2, which is being discontinued, they all come with, it, with that little cover that I just took off, and they already have grease on the oil filter gasket or o-ring actually officially and they are rarely to get stuck where you get the o-ring stuck on there it always comes with the filter and here it is they rarely come off now i would want to look inside this filter to see if the glittery stuff is gone yeah they're gone we have like a few specks from the break and left Arrows, do your magic. Let's see if we can show them. It's going to be very difficult. But you do have a few specks in there, in the oil, floating. Maybe we'll take a picture if we couldn't get it in the video. They're very little flakes. This is why you replace your oil every, the, the first thousand miles. Because that will be when this, this, flare of specs will be all over the place. It'll be so much, some people will be alarmed actually, but that's completely normal. This is the third oil change on this engine. Only has 5,000 miles though, and we still have some specs. So can you imagine when you go 10,000 miles with everything on there, you've never taken them out? It's not a good idea. Change your oil, 1,000 miles, then 5,000 miles or six months. For me, I changed it at 1,000 miles, which I got to very quickly after we bought the car. And then six months came. I was down at 5,000. I did the oil change. And here we are again, almost six months later. I mean, it's going to be November 18th, I think. Filming this video in October 19th, just to give you in case this video comes out later. But oil is cheap. Engines are expensive. I can rebuild this engine, no problem. If it burns oil or whatever, but... This is easier for me. While we wait for the oil to drain and finish, let's have a look around the car. I don't expect anything, but that's why it's an inspection. Strut is not leaking. Axle boots are good. I don't see any leaks or issues. Control arm is good. Ball joints, good. And go a little bit on the opening. I don't see obvious oil leaks from the engine. Something as common with this A25A, oil leaks from the oil pan in newer cars, believe it or not. Nothing here, so that's good. We're gonna go look on the other side. Again, strut is dry, CV boots are good. Folks, look at this CV boot. It has like a wet appearance to it. Looks like it's leaking or wet. I want you to see that very well. If you have that in your car, that is completely and absolutely normal. A lot of people have asked me about this, and some have actually scheduled appointments here at the shop to show me this. That is normal, folks. Whatever they're using at the assembly line, 
they're something is some kind of grease that they're putting on top of the CV boot. That's completely normal. This is like that the day this car was made and eventually it'll wash off and dry up, but that is not a leak. Continuing on our inspection, exhaust is good. I don't see any issues or expect any issues. All our covers are good. I do uh, suspect, and I actually do remember, we scraped something on the highway. And uh, you know, you're driving on the highway, some thing is on the road, you either hit the car next to you or you scrape it, you scrape it. You see the scrape right here? I'm glad it didn't damage anything. Only thing it did is it picked up this clip, mangled it up a little bit, but it's still holding, not doing anything. But this is why these inspections are important. Because I'm a technician, when this happens, I looked underneath the car, raised it up, looked at it, nothing happened. But owners, they'll do this. What if you rip the fuel tank and it's leaking? You wouldn't know that until you smell the fuel or worse, something catches on fire. So these inspections will catch things like this. If all of a sudden I see a dangling fuel line here or I see something, hey, you hit something, let's take care of this. But in this case, we're good. We don't have any issues. A few more, uh, actually these are not scrapes, I just, these are new pieces of mud. You're gonna do kind of a full inspection. Just walk around the car, make sure everything is still like it, it was when the car was new. We get to the back, the fuel tank, there should be no issues. Pretty interesting curve how uh, the, the exhaust on the Camry Hybrid turns around the fuel tank, because usually the fuel tank's a little bit further back, but you got the high voltage battery inside the car, so they had to push it back. Then we look at the back. Again, we're gonna look at the shocks. No leaks, no issues, control arms. Kind of a visual, quick visual inspection of anything out of the ordinary. We're not expecting to find anything and we're happy to not find anything, but you still gotta look. When you put eyes on it, you know it's good, but when you're just hoping it's good, and then uh, you say hello to our little friend. I hope you can see him. He's somewhere in the control arm here. There's a spider there, because I see his web everywhere. Told you this car's been sitting for a while. Then we get to my least favorite part of this car, which I really dislike this. Thank you, Toyota, for doing that to me, by the way. Uh, the uh, high quality plastic on the rear bumper here. Very nice, very, very nice. That really drove me crazy the day I saw this car. I mean, look at this one. I mean, come on, you're killing me here. I mean, this hole is not even open all the way. They really rushed this rear bumper and I can see it. And the problem is, if you look at it from the outside, like, oh, look at this old jaggedy edge, it looks horrible. And that will take us later to a few things that are not the greatest things about this car, but overall, I still like it. It's staying. Let me finish the oil change. We're going to do a quick tire rotation. We'll do that off camera. By the way, on tire rotations, I put the rears in the front, front in the rear. That's it. You don't need to cross the tires unless, and this is something that has come up that I want to mention to you. If you have choppy tires, or you start feeling that rough edge, then cross-rotate them. It'll actually lower the noise levels of the tires. Not a huge deal, but that is the one time you wanna cross-rotate the tires. And many people do it, it's really not necessary. You're, you're just trying to get the tire from the heavy part of the car to the lighter part of the car so they would wear evenly. Okay, let's add our oil. And one thing, if you own one of these engines, first thing is follow the oil recommendation in the manual. Many people have asked me about this. In the US, this is the only oil that should go in this car. In some other parts of the country, they will recommend different oils. Go with that oil. This engine is very sensitive with oil. Go with the correct oil. In the US, the Zero W16 is for those that say, oh, it's water, it's this and that, if it was bad, I wouldn't be putting it here. But that's the only oil that goes in these engines, folks. And one other thing, these should take 4.8 according to the manual. But if you do that, you actually overfill them. So they actually take 4.5 quarts. So start with 4.5, adjust the level from there. 
So we're gonna go 4.5 and we'll see where it's at. There's four. And there's the five. Let's put the half, half of this bottle. Perfect. Well, here's what we usually do at the shop. We'll just put a rag over here because it'll splash oil everywhere. Let's start the car. Yeah, we need just a little bit more, do we? Actually, we don't. And most of you will see this, and this is how this car is gonna go. If anything, we might have overfilled it a little bit. We're gonna check it again when it's hot. Hot. Engine's cold, oil is cold. This car has been sitting here for a good part of a week. It's not warmed up. I mean, right here, it's probably 67 degrees or so. Hardly the operating temperature. We're gonna check this when the car is fully warmed up. If it's overfilled, bring it back here. We'll drain a little bit set the level when the engine's already hot although you put cold oil it'll warm up pretty quick so you just start it let it go it's going to be at fault always check your oil level when the engine is hot because that's where it's going to be all the time so many people fill the car up when it's cold it's going to be at the full mark and then when you're when it's hot and you let it sit for a minute or two you check it it's way overfilled remember oil expands so Fighting the temptation to not clean this engine, only for you guys, because we said we want to do the video for the engine cleaning once this gets a little dirtier than this, because it's so not that dirty, but it does bother me enough. We're good here. Washer fluid is good. We actually topped it off recently, so we're all set. But we still have the cabin air filter, so let's... Do that and the wipers. Actually, let's just start with the wipers while we are here. If you're not familiar with this, newer Toyotas will have a wiper position, wiper service position. So let's turn on the key, shut it off and pull your wiper arm up. There we go. That's the service position. Now you can change your wiper blades. I do have a video on this and how to change the wiper inserts. Let's do a refresher. If you have the OEM wipers, if you do not, I highly recommend you, you get them. You're gonna pull the inserts, pull the two metal rods, and get the new inserts, which these are right around at least at the time of filming this video, prices have been going all over the place. These are right around 11, 10.99 or 11.99, something like that. You can install it, like so. Do this every six months, and your glass will always be nice and clean. You won't have that, those scratches, or you'll never be caught in a rainstorm with bad wipers. There we go. I'll leave that video in the description if you want to see this kind of more step-by-step -step and very slow and closely done. That's it. As soon as you start the car, hit the wiper. It'll come down and we're set. Let's do the cabin filter real quick. In most Toyotas, that's going to be in your glove box. Some of them, you got to remove some covers and some more covers. Just one of those dealio. Some of them, some are easier than others. And let's look at my cabin filter. We have a few bugs, a few leaves, and uh, that's about it. It's not really normally I would just clean this and put it back, but this is charcoal. And again, the same deal here. Part number will be somewhere on it. I think this one has the part number. You can barely see it here, but no, this one actually doesn't have, that's not a part number. Well, but the charcoal filters, they're very heavy compared to the regular paper ones. And small disclaimer, 
This filter is, for lack of a better word, not the right filter for this car. So the right filter for this car apparently is on back order. This is, the Toyota has apparently three filters. One of them is the paper one. One of them is like the imitation charcoal one. Third one is the real premium one, which is what that is. This one is not that premium one. It is charcoal activated and everything, but just by carrying it, not good. But the other ones are back order. We have no choice. I'd rather have something better than a dirty filter. So we're gonna put this here and really don't like this filter, but till, till the real one shows up, well, this one will do. These covers, they always, sometimes will say up in the filters as well. Aftermarket ones will have a direction of flow, so you need to know your direction of flow, but the original ones will always have the up arrow. All right, then we'll put our little door back. Some models won't have this door, newer ones do. And uh, that about concludes our 5,000 mile service. So I've had this car for almost a year. There are things I love about it, and we're gonna start with those. And there are some things that are not my best moments with this car. The first one is that I love about it. It's great on gas. I mean, I have a heavy foot. I'm always in a hurry. I work a lot. So I'm always in a hurry. I'm always driving faster than I should. It still gets 40 miles to the gallon. And so in the summertime, it's actually 43, 44, which is pretty impressive. I mean, it's not exactly the fastest car in the world, but it does move better than the previous generation Camry hybrids. I really like this engine. It's, it's a beautiful engine. It has decent torque for what it is, but it gets great gas mileage. The other thing I love about it, I have a bad back, I'm a mechanic. There's, I don't think there's a mechanic out there without a bad back. The seats are very comfortable, and this is the XSE trim. Usually the XSE will have some sport seats. This one doesn't, they're exactly the same as the XLE, the comfortable ones, just has different seat covers and whatnot. Very comfortable. I like how the steering feels. Now, this is not a sports car, even though it's XSE, whatever. It's not really an inspiring track car or whatever, but it drives comfortable. It has a good on-center feel. I like how it drives. It's, it's kind of confidence inspiring. You drive into the highway, higher speeds, you don't feel like you're holding on for dear life. It's stable. Something that the previous generation, which I did have, also did much better than the one before it, but this, is, this takes it to the next level. Things are very stable here. I really like that. The other thing I like is the technology. I like the Apple CarPlay. I wish it was wireless from the factory, but the update on that as well, that little dongle, I'll leave a link to the review of that. Works great, does still have the delay. You know, a year later, still works great. We actually got a second one. This is the one that's in the car right now because we'll talk about that toward the end of the video, why I got a second one. And something else, I am very fond of the way it looks. Doesn't need a clean up because it's been it's a little dusty. It's been sitting in the shop, but I really like the way it looks. I actually love the way it looks. I like this color combination. I like the wheels, even though they're scary when you go in bad streets, but I really like the way it looks. They really did, did good with this generation. Now let's talk about a few things that I don't like about it. And it's not the car itself, it's the build quality. Yeah, I already showed you the rear bumper. Every time I see that it drives me crazy. And I wish I, I just take a razor blade and start cutting at these chamfered edges, but again, I don't want to start tearing into that and then I just, just leave it. It's not the end of the world. And then the horrible fit and finish around the headlights and the bumper is just terrible. It's just nothing sits right here. It looks like the car has been in an accident. I mean, you look at the gap here. This is not consistent with the other side. Every time I see that, it bothers me a lot, but I know there's no real solution. I mean, you can see a gap there, here, there's no gap, but the bumper sticks out more. Little stuff, it's not the end of the world. The hood gaps are also not great. Not the end of the world. But something that is kind of starting to develop, at least the last time I, I drove it, as the weather starts getting colder here, there is a lot of rattles and squeaks. 
from the desk, from the window, from the door panel, and pretty soon here, this is gonna drive me crazy enough where I'm gonna start digging into them to quiet them down. Principal noise is coming from this, like the upper dash vent panel. This rattles a lot when it's cold. It just buzzes and it drives me really mad. It just bothers me a lot. So this is something I'm gonna to have to address. And then wind noise from the windows and the doors, which the driver's door does have, at least it's gonna be hard to see on video, but it does have an inconsistent gap. The top gap on this side is smaller than the, than the middle, then it gets tighter at the bottom. And then something is just not right about the way this door sits. You can actually see the too much body at the top, too little body at the bottom. It's just, it's not sitting right. I don't remember, now if you open this door with force and let it kinda, it's gonna bend the frame, that's normal, but I don't recall that ever happening. And I remember the wind noise from this door from day one. See, these are little things. They're, they're not, car is reliable, runs great, I love the gas mileage and all that, but these are the little things that really annoy people. And uh, this is the difference. This is, this is the things between Japanese-made car and a non-Japanese-made car. The Japanese will reject the car completely and start all over when they see stuff like that. Our brothers here will just be like, nah, the dealer will fix that. Well, I ain't gonna take it to the dealer for that because uh, I remember those coming to the dealership, they can be challenging to fix this. So I don't want somebody else to get upset at the car and start throwing things. I'm not doing that. I'll just fix it my own when it bothers me enough. And that's that. Which takes us to two more things in this video we're gonna talk about. First one is Mr. Eros. For those who are not familiar, Eros is a dear friend of the family, someone I consider to be my brother, for real, not even before he worked here. He works with us and he has been the best. He is the hardest working 24 year old you will ever see in your life. And I mean that from my heart. He's a very hard worker, very good guy. He has a car, which not, not my favorite car in the world. I love you, Eros, but it's not my favorite car in the world. It is the Scion FRS. You guys have seen it in a video before. It's a Scion FRS with a very big wing. Initially, this wing bothered me so much. It's like, this looks wrong. But now that I see this car every day, this wing has grown on me. It actually doesn't look bad. Eros has good taste. But uh, Eros's car is here and he's gonna be swapping dust with my Camry because we have a small situation to show you. So Eros drove in today with almost a flat tire because we have a nail that just happens to go right here. We temporarily plugged it just so we can move the car and wouldn't go flat. It's holding, but this is not safe at all. We just did this so we wouldn't have to keep putting air in the tire, move the car, because we're gonna, you know, we work, we have a lot of cars, we're always moving stuff. But uh, this car is gonna sit here until we get a tire for it. So in the meantime, Eros is gonna be driving the Camry. That's why we had to kind of put a accelerated pedal on the metal on the Camry to get the service done, because I didn't want to drive it a lot with it almost due for service like that and I know the wipers were not good. It's just, I don't want to scratch my glass. So we got that done, Eros gonna drive that, and I am driving a demo car, actually, currently as a data film in this video, it's the Mazda CX-5, which I do car reviews from other manufacturers on my second channel, if you don't follow that, check it out. It's the same style, mechanical review kinda focused on other makes and models, just something fun. I like to see other cars from other manufacturers, see what the world is doing outside Toyota Lexus land, so that's what I do. And the last thing about this video is, I told you we bought a second wireless CarPlay because Mrs. Car Kierna just got a new car. Not gonna say what it is. I'm working on the video and you will see it. It is something huge. And uh, there has been some shuffling around in the fleet here. So that's all coming and more. Folks, if you are looking to buy a hybrid and you are on the fence, look, I love hybrid technology, but going into something new, you're old school, you've always had gasoline cars, you don't like the whole electric car deal, and you look at hybrids and you're unsure. How about the battery? How about this? Folks, they've really come a long way. 
I own one, I love this car, I wouldn't mind driving this anywhere because this transition, the fourth generation hybrid system, the transitions between electric, engine, both, whatever, it's really stable, it's really smooth. And I love that before, I liked hybrid technology, but I never bought a hybrid because that would drive me really bad. I, it would really bother me to have like that shake every time you switch back and forth. That was not smooth. But today, in the fourth generation hybrid system, it is very smooth. You almost don't feel it. And that's, that's the thing about them. You don't feel that there's a transition, and that's what it is. If you're interested in a hybrid, don't hesitate. I was in your shoes before. I felt like, hmm, I don't know if I want a hybrid, but I love this thing. Except the rattles, but you can fix that. It's not a big deal. Folks, I hope this video is helpful and informative. I hope you learned something new. If you like it, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel so I got some of my other videos. And until the next video, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And you have yourself a wonderful day.